Hey guys, in this video we're going to take this boring old render and with some adjustments to our blender settings and optimizations for comping an AE or nuke and turn it into this much better result. This video is especially helpful for all of you guys on tight deadlines for work and needing custom mobility as the production moves forward. We'll be covering passes, render outputs, camera data from Blender to AE, and much more. Let's get started. So here we are in Blender, and as you can see, I'm in our scene. It's just something that I whipped together in like 30 minutes. It's nothing fancy. If I play through it, uh, we're gonna notice a few things. So uh, the first thing is that the scene kind of looks a little bland. You know, maybe we might want to add some stuff in the background, like say some fog or something that actually has texture um, and do that more so in post compared to the 3D software. And let's say that I want to add a name behind the character. Well, it's going to be pretty difficult to do that in our 3D program. And that's why we turn to compositing or post to tidy up these renders. Now note, if you did want to put the text in to the, directly through the 3D software, you can. However, there's going to be some issues. Um, and just, it's easier to do it in post, in my opinion, compared to 3D. Like, for example, we would need to adjust the focus plane. Um, if we did want to increase the emission strength of this uh, text, and we did, you can see it'll start to blow out our shot. So it is a lot better to do it um, in the compositing process. So now that we've identified the issues that we want to fix, um, we need to start thinking of ways to go about it. So for the fog, we could use something called a mist pass. Uh, and what that is, is it basically shows distance. And using this pass, we can determine the luminance of, the, of where we want the fog to be in our scene. So um, we can render one of these out. Um, for the name, the only thing that's in front of the name is pretty much the character and this um, orb. We can set that up by rendering a secondary mispass um, if needed. And we can just like render it again. Um, or we can do it uh, with a method that I'm going to show you in this uh, compositing tab in our outputs. That will basically take it from this and it will shrink it so it's just the character there and, it, and we can use that as a mat within compositing. So to set up our mispass in the top right of our viewer you will see these four uh, spheres. These indicate the different rending, rendering modes but next to that you'll see a drop down arrow. We're going to click that. Now, next we're going to hit combined and we're going to open up the mispass. Now yours might look a little different depending on your scene but if, if it's all white or all black don't worry it's easy to fix. We can come here to the world uh, properties and we can adjust the start and the end depth of your mispass. I usually set this to the range of my fog. Now that we have our mispass set up, we can actually use the same pass to create a separate render and use that as the mat for the text behind the character. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up the view layer properties tab and we're going to enable the mispass under data. Now if we hit render, render image, you will see that we have a mist past view layer. However, we still need to create a mat for the text behind the character. To do this, we can open up the compositing tab inside of Blender. If this is your first time in the compositing tab, do not be frightened. It is very simple. On the left, we have our inputs and on the right, we have the output. And then whatever's in between is what you change to the image. The main thing that we, are, we will be doing is we will be going over the file output node which is basically just a way to export um, multi your passes that are kind of combined within this render. You can render in a .exr format, however, softwares like After Effects don't tend to handle them well, which is why the file output path may be quicker. In the file output node, we can click this folder icon and it will open up the Blender file view. From here, you can find where you want to place your renders and we can create a new folder and we're going to call this mist pass and then in parentheses i'm going to write fog because this is the pass that we optimize for the fog you can name it whatever you want down here just make sure you include dot png at the very end of it next we're going to hit accept and as you can see the file output has been set next i'm going to duplicate this by hitting shift d and we're going to set a new file output however this time we're going to set it for the text once we have our two file outputs, you will also see them appear down here in the output tab. Now I'm going to pull up a viewer so we can actually see what we're looking at. So if I expand this window, 
and I open up the image editor, we can pull up the render results and it will be whatever is plugged into this node. So if you look at the mist, we know that this one is optimized for the fog. So you can just plug this into the fog file output. Now, whenever we render an image, it will output to this uh, directory. However, we still need to optimize it for the character. So to do that, we're going to add a color ramp. And all we're going to do is we're just going to increase this white here. Okay, so in this case, it works better to invert the mat, and then we're just going to use a inverted uh, luminance with an After Effects. Uh, the reason for that being is because if we did it the other way, you can see how there's this data here that is partially white. And what that means is that when we put it into After Effects and we used that, uh, the text would be partially white as well, so we do not want that. Once we've made our adjustments to the mist pass for the uh, text, we can then plug it into the second file output directory. And finally, we can plug in this tab that says image into the composite to view our beauty pass. And now from here, we are ready to render the animation. And once we have finished rendering, we are almost ready to start compositing within your preferred software, Nuke, After Effects, Fusion, etc. The last thing that we have to do is we have to export our camera data. If you are exporting your camera to a software with 3D support, such as Nuke, you can simply export it as an FBX or a .abc file and bring it into the software. However, for After Effects, we have to use a script um, I'll link it in the description, but basically it's an add-on that you can install and it allows you to export a JSON script that you can run in After Effects to bring in your camera. So it's super simple and I'm about to show. All I have to do is you have to go to File, Export, and you're going to scroll down until you see Adobe After Effects. We're going to click it and then from here we can uh, throw it wherever and we're just going to hit Export to Adobe After Effects. Now we're ready to start uh, compositing. We're gonna import all of our footage as uh, PNG sequences. And as you can see, we have our beauty pass, we have our fog pass, and we have our text matte pass uh, all ready to go. So we're good on that. However, uh, you will see that, the, that uh, some of the shots may appear to be 30 FPS. Change them, you can, do, you can hit Control, Alt, G on your keyboard, and change the frame rate to your desired one. In this case, it's 24. So I did that to all of my sequences. And now to import the camera, what we can do is we, go, we can go to File, Scripts, Run Script File. And from here, we can choose our scripts that Blender exported using that add-on. And we can hit Open. And this will ask you what you want to create the composition. And now if we open it, your camera may be a little off to the side. So just beware. And as you can see, it does follow the exact same camera motion from Blender and it just brought it into After Effects, which is perfect. So from here, what I usually do is we can delete this uh, folder that it created and we're going to right click on our beauty pass and we're going to hit new comp from selection. So what this will do is it'll create a new composite with our footage inside of After Effects. Now from here, we can open up our composition with the camera and we can simply copy it and paste it into our main comp. Now we have a 3D camera set up and ready to go. So the first thing that, we're, that I'm going to fix is this fog. So to do that, we're simply going to add in our fog pass. And if we look at this pass, you can see that it has the luminance data needed for the fog, which is perfect. From here, we can turn this off and we can bring in our footage of a fog or even a solid plane. I'm going to bring in some stock footage. This is the footage. It's from um, footagecreate.com. Great website. Would definitely recommend it and I'm gonna be using this. So we can drag it into our scene, like so. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to a Luma mat of this uh, fog pass or the mist pass. And as you can see, now we have fog. However, we need to make it fit into our scene. So to do that, we're gonna make it a 3D layer so it tracks properly. We're gonna turn on our camera as well. Now is the tricky part is because our camera was way off to the side in Blender, we're going to need to also position that in our After Effects composition as well. Okay, so now that I brought it into view, um, I'm just going to rotate it a bit. And as you can see, even if we move it, that mat that we created is still working. So I can even move it down here and you will see that it will be excluded by this box. So that's how we know that it, the mist pass is working. Now if you play it, you'll see that the fog is tracked into our scene. 
and from here it's just all about look development so what i might do is i might make a, a mask now what i might do is i might add a tint i add some curves to and i'm liking how that looks and then i'm going to top it all off with a blur because the fog is after all out of focus the next issue i'm going to tackle is the name so that is super simple so we're going to create our text and I'm just going to call it name for now. We're going to hit control alt home to center the anchor point, And then we're going to hit control home again. This will bring it into the center of our composition. From here, we can click the 3D icon again. And it's going to be out of frame again. However, we can copy the position from the fog and bring it onto the text. And once that's done, all I have to do is I have to rotate it on the Y 90 degrees. And as you can see, we have the text now tracked. And from here, we can just move it into position. And now we're gonna bring in the text pass mat that we have. And as I, and as I said earlier, this one is inverted. Um, however, if we look at the pass, you'll see that this is not entirely white. So to fix it, we can add a curves effect and just kind of bring up the contrast, just like so. Here we can set it to be Luma, inverted pass, and voila. Just like that, we have the uh, text fully tracked and I'm gonna add a quick little animation to it. And just like that, the shot is pretty much finished. I might go back and add a few more things to it just to make it look better, but that is the basis of it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider uh, giving it a like and um, have a great day. My name's Brains and peace.